chemical reaction can be defined simply as the interaction and chemical transformation of the atoms and molecules of usually two or more substances to form a new substance or substances. The substances that take part in a chemical reaction are known as the reactants, while the new substances formed after a chemical reaction has occurred are known as the products. A chemical reaction results in the rearrangement of the atoms and molecules of the reactants to form products with new atomic and molecular orientations. This is achieved through the making or breaking of bonds between the constituting atoms. It is worth noting here that in a chemical reaction, atoms of one element do not change into those of another element. It is also worth noting that atoms do not disappear from the reactant mixture or appear from elsewhere. Chemical reactions are different from the physical changes in that the former leads to the creation of new substances while the latter merely alters the state of the original substance without changing its chemical composition. A very common everyday example of a chemical change would be the burning of paper. Paper, which is made up mostly of cellulose fibers, when burned, creates a new substance in the form of black ash, also known as carbon, and also releases a gas known as carbon dioxide and water in the form of water vapor. There are many different forms of chemical reactions that take place in nature. These can be categorized into five major types, namely combination reaction, decomposition reaction, displacement reaction, double displacement reaction, oxidation and reduction reaction or simply redox reaction. In this video, we'll be demonstrating a few laboratory examples of the fourth type of reaction, which is double displacement reaction. Double displacement reaction or double replacement reaction or metathesis as opposed to the single displacement reaction discussed in a previous video is a type of chemical reaction in which usually two reactant compounds exchange their ions and bonds to form two or sometimes even three new product compounds. A typical double displacement reaction has the general equation shown here. AB plus CD gives AD plus CB. In a double displacement reaction, the positively charged cations of one reactant and the negatively charged anions of the other reactant switch places and form new bonds to create new compounds. Double displacement reactions generally occur between two ionic compounds dissolved in an aqueous medium. Depending on the nature of the products formed, a double displacement reaction can be a precipitation reaction, a neutralization reaction, or a gas formation reaction. This type of double displacement reaction is characterized by the formation of two products one of which precipitates out as an insoluble product while the other product goes into solution as a soluble entity. Precipitation reaction is probably one of the most important types of reaction in analytical chemistry. The soluble or insoluble nature of the target substance allows for its convenient separation from the reaction mixture for identification or further analysis. This type of double displacement reaction is characterized by the formation of a gaseous molecule as one of the products. This gas is usually insoluble in the aqueous medium and bubbles out from the reaction mixture, which may then be collected and analyzed further. This type of double displacement reaction usually occurs between an acid and a base in an aqueous medium. It is characterized by the formation of a neutral ionic compound, colloquially known as salt, as one of its products. The other product formed is usually water, a stable covalent compound. In some cases, a third product, usually in the form of a gas, is also formed. All three types of double displacement reactions are among the most commonly encountered reactions and hold huge significance in chemistry. 
In this video, we'll be demonstrating a few laboratory examples of each of the types of double displacement reaction. To perform these experiments, we'll need the following. Sodium sulfate aqueous solution. Barium chloride aqueous solution. Test tube holder. Test tube stand. Plastic droppers or pipettes. Lead nitrate solution. Potassium iodide solution. Silver nitrate solution. Sodium chloride solution. Dilute hydrochloric acid. Phenolphthalene indicator solution. Sodium carbonate powder. Dilute sulfuric acid. Sodium hydroxide solution. Sodium sulfide solid flakes. Lead acetate indicator paper and some test tubes. Before the start of the experiment, make sure to follow all necessary safety precautions in handling chemicals. Wear lab coats, safety goggles and gloves. Perform all experiments involving the release of gases in a well-ventilated area or better still within the confines of a fume hood. Compounds of lead, silver or any other heavy metals are generally toxic in nature. Dilute acids and dilute bases, even though dilute, can still be corrosive. Hydrogen sulfide gas is highly toxic. To perform this precipitation reaction experiment, all you need to do is take 3 to 5 ml of either sodium sulfate solution or barium chloride solution in a test tube. For this demo, I take barium chloride in the test tube. Now, using a dropper, add sodium sulfate solution dropwise to the barium chloride solution. Observe what happens the instant you mix the two solutions. As soon as both salt solutions come in contact with each other, a milky white precipitate forms. If you allow the precipitate to settle down long enough, the contents of the tube separates into two layers, the white precipitate that settles to the bottom and a clear layer of liquid on top. The precipitation reaction between sodium sulfate and barium chloride can be represented by the chemical equation shown here. The white precipitate formed is barium sulfate. It forms as a precipitate because barium sulfate, like many other chemical compounds, is virtually insoluble in water at room temperature. The clear liquid consists of sodium chloride dissolved in the aqueous medium in its ionic form Na plus and Cl minus. Sodium chloride, instead of forming a precipitate, goes into solution because it is very easily soluble in water. The reaction between sodium sulfate and barium chloride solutions is a classic example of double displacement reaction because here there is a mutual exchange of cations and anions between the two participating reactant molecules to eventually form two product compounds, both of which are different from the reactants. Sodium and barium cations switch places. Sulfate and chloride anions switch places. The result is double displacement of the ions, forming two new compounds, an insoluble barium sulfate and a soluble sodium chloride. A similar precipitation reaction occurs between aqueous lead nitrate and potassium iodide solutions. Lead iodide precipitates out as a bright yellow solid while potassium nitrate, being highly soluble, goes into solution.
Silver nitrate and sodium chloride also show a similar precipitation reaction, with insoluble silver chloride precipitating out as a white solid. which may then turn dull to grayish on exposure to light, because silver salts are generally light-sensitive compounds and so historically commonly used in photography. To perform this neutralization reaction, take a test tube or a small beaker and add about 5 to 10 ml of dilute hydrochloric acid to it. Add 2 to 3 drops of an indicator solution such as phenolphthalein to the acid. Next, add sodium carbonate powder to the acid in small increments. Continue adding the carbonate until the reaction ceases and neutralization is achieved through a change in the color of the indicator. Record your observations. When a drop of phenolphthalein indicator is added to the acid, the indicator remains colorless because phenolphthalein is colorless in an acidic medium. As you add the sodium carbonate to the acid, a characteristic brisk effervescence is seen, which indicates that the acid is reacting with the base. Brisk effervescence is a characteristic reaction seen when an acid reacts with a metal carbonate or bicarbonate base. When a burning splint is introduced near the mouth of the test tube, you'll observe that the gas produced from the effervescence reaction is able to extinguish the flame of the burning splint. As you keep adding the carbonate, the effervescence gradually becomes less vigorous and excess carbonate begins settling down to the bottom of the test tube. The effervescent reaction eventually ceases altogether and one quick stirring of the undissolved excess carbonate causes the color of the indicator to turn from colorless to a faint pink. The appearance of the pink color is generally accepted as the reaction endpoint and the achievement of neutralization between the acid and the base. In fact, this change in indicator color is the basis for visualizing the neutralization endpoint in titration experiments. You will learn more about titration in higher classes. You can also check out my other videos on titration by clicking on the links in the description below. The neutralization reaction between dilute hydrochloric acid and sodium carbonate can be represented by the chemical equation shown here. The gas produced during the reaction is carbon dioxide, which is not a supporter of combustion, hence it extinguishes the flame of the burning splint. At the end of the neutralization reaction, the reaction mixture in the test tube is no longer an acid solution but rather a neutral aqueous solution of sodium chloride, which is an ionic compound. The change in the pH of the reaction mixture from acidic to neutral is indicated by a change in the color of the indicator from a colorless to light pink. Phenolphthalein is deep pink in a basic or alkaline medium and technically even the slightest formation of a pink color means the reaction mixture has slightly shifted to an alkaline pH. However, for the sake of convenience and simplicity, the formation of a faint pink color is generally accepted as neutralization endpoint, which means that neutralization has been achieved, and the solution is now neutral. This acid-based neutralization reaction is categorized as an example of double displacement reaction because there is mutual exchange or reshuffling of cations and anions between the two participating reactant molecules to eventually form two or more product compounds, in this case three, all of which are chemically different from the reactants. A similar neutralization reaction is also seen between acids and metal hydroxide bases 
For instance, the reaction between dilute sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide follows the chemical equation shown here. In the case of acid-base neutralization reactions involving a metal hydroxide, two new products are formed. The neutralization endpoint can be visualized by a change in the color of the indicator that was added prior to the start of the reaction. To perform this reaction, fill a test tube with 5 to 10 ml of a dilute acid such as hydrochloric acid. Add solid sodium sulfide in small increments. Observe carefully. A brisk effervescent reaction takes place between sodium sulfide and hydrochloric acid. Bubbles of a gas are released from the surface of the sodium sulfide flakes. A slight whiff of the gas gives a characteristic odor of rotten eggs. The gas is produced for as long as enough sodium sulfide is added to react with the acid in the test tube and complete neutralization is achieved. If you introduce a strip of lead acetate indicator paper near the mouth of the test tube, the white strip turns black. The reaction between sodium sulfide and dilute hydrochloric acid is shown by this chemical equation. At the end of the reaction, the liquid in the test tube is no longer an acid but a neutral aqueous solution of sodium chloride. The gas produced is hydrogen sulfide, which is easily identified by its characteristic rotten egg smell. When lead acetate paper is introduced into the gas, it turns black. This is because lead acetate reacts with hydrogen sulfide to form insoluble lead sulfide which is black in color. The reaction for this test is as shown here. This reaction between lead acetate and hydrogen sulfide is also a fine example of precipitation reaction which is a type of double displacement reaction discussed at the beginning of the video. So this was all about the double displacement reaction and its different types. If you found this video helpful in your studies or teaching, then please do consider subscribing to my channel and sharing it with friends, colleagues and anyone for whom this video might be relevant. Thanks for watching.